My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi Fruit Loop. What you know? Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know anything. I try to get on here and be prepared to say I know something, but yeah, I don't. I don't know anything. Yeah, I tell you, I'm tired, dude. Like it's yeah. hit me. Yeah. Um, so if you're on YouTube, you can look close and see my lovely bag. Look, look, I like I've been socked in the eye. Whatever. Did you just say you're an old bag? What'd you say? Your mama's an old bag. So let's just <laughs> in that there. Mom, you hear that? <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know what? Life is good. It could be way worse. What's crazy worse. is I went through the same thing, but it was several years ago. Yeah. Um, with my mom that you're dealing with your aunt. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of it's crazy to it is and it's like you really want to keep their spirits up and mm -hmm. and she's doing great but it's like you know i understand um her frustrations but we try to have fun when i'm up there taking care of her and um you know you got to keep things in perspective well she's very independent like my mom was right, they don't right. really want you doing anything for them but yeah but they, we get you know she she don't mind me so we take care of what we got to take care of her husband's Ooh. been amazing so first off, let's give a big shout out to our sponsor, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. And the pillows are still there. And um, But if you're on YouTube and you look behind me, if somebody had not moved my table, we have this awesome Clemson blanket. By the way, I've got Dabo Sweeney getting an autograph to my aunt. I'm so excited. She's going to die. Because when she was in ICU, she was intubated right after surgery. We thought she was going to die. And I said, Angie, we beat the Gamecocks. And like the only response we had in a day was like her trying to lift her thumb yeah. up. So yeah. anyways, um, so anyways, speaking of two, two cool t-shirt quilts, I thought Clemson, you know how my brain works. It's like, oh yeah, I'm like that dog and up squirrel. Just, yeah. Um, anyways, so go to two cool t-shirt quilts.com slash pretty lies and alibis and go to the learning section. I really recommend that. I've been going there. Uh, lately, just reading on all this stuff, I've learned a lot, even though she's been on board with us for months now. So go to the website, just play around. You'll be surprised what, what you find that you don't know. Also, big thank you to Diane for the, the sweet PayPal donation. She wants you and I to go out and have brunch. So we're going to do that soon. Sweet. And uh, Diane is, um, you know, at least once a month, she's, she'll send us a little something and, and we really appreciate it. She doesn't know how much. So my brother got two new kittens. They had to have their chihuahua put to sleep. So oh, I'm no. oh my God. Yeah. One of the little ones that used to bite my leg. Yeah, that's Isabella. She's uh yeah, she's gone now. Uh -huh. I was a little sad. That was my buddy. But Easy my brother, day. like, all of a sudden, I want two kittens to grow up together. So I go over there last night, meet their new kittens. I'm holding them, cuddling them. Come home. Sherlock hadn't seen me all day. I've been gone. Like he jumps up. He's like rubbing me. He's like, hey, mom. And then he smells those kittens. You're in trouble and he now. attacked me. You cheated. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He literally, it was like, oh, hey, mom. And then he was like, 
Oh no. And then he got his paw and, and I mean, across the face, slap me and then like started biting my neck. You can probably still see where it's a little, yeah. So whatever. He's jealous. Can't say I hate that though. <laughs> he loves me. Anyways, we're going to jump right into the Gilbert documents. We're on part four now. We've been flying through this. And um, so we left off talking about where... It was text messages. Yes. So... I think we, I left off where Chad and Zulema were speaking. Yes. Uh, Tammy had just died. Uh, right. Okay, yep. so October 28th is where we are. Alex sends Zulema a picture of Chad and Lori and two other women at a restaurant. Chad and Lori are sitting next to each other, and Chad's no longer wearing his wedding band. That was That's fast. Quick. Yeah. So Zulema texts yeah. Alex in response to the picture. He looks way too happy. Alex yeah. said he escaped the warden, so it's all downhill from here. Mm-hmm. Mm Zulema, woohoo, he's a happy man. Look at that smile. Alex says he's a little giddy. And Zulema says that's so cute. So let's move to October 31st, Halloween. What happens? Zulema texts Lori and mentions it's Halloween. And Lori says she forgot. Really? This is also the night the private investigator Rich Robertson saw Melanie and Alex packing her things into a U-Haul. If you remember, that's when they left. Yep. It was like the 31st. You put that tracking device under their car, right? That was smooth, yeah. yeah. On, the, uh, on the rental or something. Yeah, he's a smart the dude. If I lived in Arizona and needed one, I'd, I'd call Rich. Oh, yeah. Give Rich a call. Uh, so Colby said in early to middle November, Lori called and told him Alex would be visiting a female friend in Arizona for Thanksgiving and told him Alex would drive the Nissan Rogue and leave it for him and his wife to use. Is it Rogue or Rouge? I think it's Rogue. I, maybe I'm thinking Moulin Rouge. That's how yeah, I you spell it. You're thinking of Moulin Rouge? Yes, yeah, Nissan Rogue, I think. Okay. You know they're going to let us know. Y'all oh, let yeah. us know if we mess it up. It was me if we messed it up. but No, it's probably me. <laughs> no, I think there's a commercial one. That's what it says. I don't know. Um, So th this is the car that we later find out that we've already discussed. It had blood in it, right? Yep. Yeah um yeah but we don't find out who yeah exactly um november 9th Lori sends Zulema pictures of their wedding in hawaii who <laughs> november 20th Zulema tells melanie gibb Lori and chad are going to hawaii indefinitely uh chad and Lori go quiet after their wedding and investigators found no other references to crimes or jj and tylee this is the big push right yeah, this yeah. is kind of when we see Nate. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, Shane Bishop, who is an amazing producer for Dateline, he was behind the camera on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, yeah. He's yeah, the yeah, one that runs the uh, Twitter account, like NBC producer, when they're doing Valo stuff. It switches yeah. around based on what show is airing, but he's all Valo. He's, I mean, he is amazing. I love anything he and Keith Morrison do. Yeah. So November 26, Rexburg PD contacts Alex and Chad at Lori's apartment in Rexburg. Alex tells authorities that JJ is with Kay in Louisiana. They knew this isn't true because Kay initiated the welfare check. So that's the whole, all that. They didn't know, I don't think, they, they didn't know Lori's phone number. Chad acted like he didn't know Lori. Yeah, yeah. All that. Yeah, yeah. Um. I, I mean, to investigators who are already two steps ahead and know what's up. Exactly. So the same day is when Lori tells investigators that JJ is with Melanie Gibb in Arizona. The same day they try to reach Melanie Gibb, but they could not. Later that evening, she calls them back and says she doesn't have JJ and at this point is worried about his welfare. November 27th, Rexburg police executed a search warrant in the adjoining apartments of Lori and Alex, and obviously they're gone. They call Colby and he says JJ and Tylee are not with him and he was concerned for their well-being. He said the last time he saw them on a FaceTime call was August the 30th. So a little time's passed there. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be, you know, because they were coming to, to Colby in Arizona. 
And he was like, I, I don't know. And then he would text his mom. And that's when she would say, you know, oh, Colbs, we're fine yeah. or whatever. So during that call, when JJ and Tylee saw Colby, Tylee was babysitting JJ and they were in the townhomes. That was the last time that he heard from them. Mm. Um, Got to be heavy for him. Oh, yeah. Just those last meetings, you know. Well, um, as days later, Tylee's killed. And then a few weeks yeah. later, JJ's killed. Yeah. yeah. He said he had sent Tylee texts. And we kind of know this from the past. He felt the responses were short. And the content of the messages were not ones like Tylee would normally send. So it, when, what I was going to say, it's crazy how you get into the flow of how somebody texts. Yeah. And you can tell when it's not. I can good. tell with you, if you agree to something or you're cool with something, mm -hmm. you do a thumbs up. Yeah. Like you yeah. can tell me 50 things with a thumbs up. That's just how much we text each other. And yeah. a thumbs up can mean 10 things from you. And yeah. I just have to know what I sent before that. <laughs> it is, it is true though. People yeah. get in a rhythm if, you know what I'm saying? If somebody took Taylor's phone that I didn't know and was texting, you would I would know in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. So, where were we? Uh, when Colby would ask Lori oh. about Tylee, she would say she was fine and couldn't talk because she was in school. Which is odd, too, because you would think, I mean, in a normal world, if Tylee really were at BYU you know she would probably reach out to her brother the first couple of days and say, hey, I really like it. You know, that, I yeah. mean, I would have looked for things like that too. You just, for me, I, I totally feel sorry for Colby. That he had no way to know what was going on. Yeah. Well, she he was trying. He was reaching out. He was. He was trying. And the yeah. other thing, one, teenagers always have their phone. Exactly. Yeah. To, I mean, in between, in between classes, she would have still been able to text him. For but sure. we do know from prior stuff that's been uh, put out that she took her phone too. So Right. She took it after they murdered Charles. Yep. They meaning Lori and Alex. Yeah. So Colby calls his mom and said police are asking about JJ and Tylee. And she says they're fine and she will contact police. The investigators talked to two of Tylee's friends who also said the text from her did not sound right. They said they were shorter. Mm -hmm. And so Thanksgiving, November 28th, this would be 2019, Colby calls Lori, but her phone is not in service anymore. That would have been a really big red flag. And I think it was for him where mm -hmm. just out of the blue, your mom changed her number and didn't tell you, hey, I have a new number. Yeah. So he couldn't contact his mom. And the only other person he had a number for was Alex. He called and texted Alex about the car and Alex confirmed the car would be available to Colby to pick up and also told him ta that Tylee and JJ were fine when he asked. The same day Colby emails Lori, mom, you changed your number. What is going on? Lori replied, hi, Colbs. I need you to know we are safe and happy. I know this sounds confusing to you, but I need you to trust me. Although there are wicked people trying to cause harm that Jesus is on our side and taking care of us. Although we may be out of touch for a while, I will continue to help you. I love you all so much. The car and car insurance will be paid for you so you can drive it with no worries. The phones will also be good. You are precious to your mama. I love you so much. Kisses to you and Kelsey. Hope to talk soon. I will continue to pray blessings on your family constantly. So, you know, I guess on one hand, Colby's married. I think at this point they have their own baby. You're doing your family thing states away. You know. Yeah. Nobody could have predicted what happened. What we knew happened in June 26th of 2020. Yeah. Nobody mm -hmm. ever, anybody who knew Lori was shocked that that mm -hmm. was the end result. Yep. You know, I don't blame anybody for, for not catching on. Like Colby, you know what I mean? I mean, like their inner circle, yes. Um, but you know, like with Colby, I mean, Colby, like you, you have always said Colby's alive. Yeah. Well, even Kay and Larry said they didn't ever think it would come to this. Right. So you do kind of get that feeling Colby was, you know, her Lori's favorite. Mm -hmm. You remember he said it bothered him. She would almost treat him like a boyfriend. Yep. Possessive and stuff, which is weird. Yeah. But anyway, so you pick it up from here. 
So Colby explained he has also received sporadic mobile payments from Lori via Venmo. He said it wasn't unusual for her to send him money. Uh, she would send money from hers or Tylee's account and also provided another Venmo account for Lori, but he had never received anything from that account. And we saw that early on. We saw those screenshots of all that. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of that maybe was on her end designed to just keep him from calling. Yeah. Like yeah. you're 20 something years old and your mom's sending you Venmo because she's got the money. I don't know if any 20 year old is going to say, don't send it. Yeah. Well, you're mm -hmm. early on with you're starting your family. I mean, you're struggling for cash and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, November 30th, Alex sent Colby a text. Uh, Lori had stopped communicating with him. Uh, so Alex sent Lo Colby a text and arranged to get the car. He said the keys were in the glove box and gave him an address, which was a residence of dun, 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 Ian Pulowski's sister. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. They have their family in town. They have yeah. all their family right there. Yeah. And that's you send odd. it to Ian's sister. Yeah. Colby said the interior of the car was dirty and he took it to be washed. He said the front passenger seat was covered in animal hair. That was kind of curious because they had gotten rid of Bailey, uh, what, in Arizona? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe somebody had a dog. So Chad, um, Chad has the animals. Um, he's on the farm. That's my thought. I mean, he's got a pet cemetery. So me, yeah. They um, not so, a raccoon hair. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the raccoon. I say that in air quotes. <laughs> December third, Alex activates a new phone. December fourth, Zulema tells Alex that Raphael, aka Chad, aka Harry Potter, aka Loinfire. AKA got a new crazy. phone number. <laughs> December 5th at 4.08 p.m., Alex texts a contact label guy, who is Chad, and he says, hey, it's Ray Romano. Chad hey. doesn't respond. I wouldn't respond to that either. Stupid. Hey, Ray Romano? Everybody knows Raymond? I love that show. Don't be, don't be getting no bad juju vibes on Ray Romano. They pulled Oprah in this, and then they had like uh, Spike Lee. They had all remember that list of celebrities that were like yeah. the evilest of the evil. Yeah, but I, he didn't yeah, even yeah. spell Ray right. I know is uh, Ray. Ray. He's got to spell R E H Ray. Yeah. <laughs> December six, Alex communicates with Chad and asks about Lily. Now, Lily is a name used for Lori. If you guys remember from the Chandler docs. Based on the context of the message on Alex's phone, Lori was using Chad's phone to reply to him. So December 9th, Alex asked Zulema if she ordered the storms that were occurring. She said she ordered the storms when they were having a barbecue. When they were having barbecue. I wonder what that number is. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I would like to place an order, please. <laughs> right, some storm. thunderstorms to be over to barbecue on 5 <laughs> 30 yeah. mile an hour winds, light yeah. to moderate rain. Add um, some ketchup to that, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. December 10th, Alex asked Chad for a blessing because he was having a bad attack and couldn't breathe. Okay, so here we go. This yep. is when the blessing come. Yep. December 11th, the day Tammy's exhumed, Chad asks Alex how he's doing, and Alex says he's winded when he stands up and he has a resting pulse of a, 100. The same day at 11.35 a.m., Alex texts Chad, I feel like the poison from the spear in the heart has done some residual damage. Uh -oh. That's something that's suspicious. That's weird. Yeah. So I'm always convinced he took something to kill himself. I think they knew because we found out that Chad knew they were exhuming Tammy. Is that right? Uh, Chad told them all that Tammy was right. being exhumed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's weird though. Yeah, what if they sent some kind of poison spear from Hawaii? That dude, that was part of the blessing. Somebody could have had one of them pipes and been like, "Yeah, got him right there, right in the heart." Yeah, man. When we were uh, kids, we tried to make those. Oh, uh, we we went to the Indian reservation here and got them. Oh, uh, you oh, didn't them blow Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, do I got to go to Cherokee tomorrow? You got to go to Cherokee tomorrow. I could get those like when my kids are being lazy and they won't like they're, clean their room. I'll just be like. They're bamboo and they got these little things on the end. Oh, it's on like Donkey Kong. I'm going to buy myself yeah. a Christmas gift tomorrow. <laughs> my my ancestors are Cherokee. I'm just, know, yeah, right? like my grandmother was half. You ought to be able to shoot that thing good then. Either. You know this family's 
got <laughs> Cherokee. My dad, he he has a lot of Cherokee features. Okay, yeah. so 1247. Alex texts Melanie. That's a big no-go on your stuff. Melanie's. I'm sorry. Alex texts Melanie's. That's a big no-go on your stuff. Just buy a new computer. They won't give it back to you. They are holding it for leverage until you help them. So just write it off. I'm thinking maybe her computer got confiscated. It did because remember the cops went in her apartment. Yep. Remember she left and she was like, take whatever. I don't care. Yeah, that's right. Remember? That, yeah, that's right. The same day Chad tells Alex he has paid the bills on the house in Rexburg and Alex said he was just going to let all of the stuff in Rexburg go. Makes no sense. Zero. I want Dece my stuff. Heck yeah. Pack it up. Yeah. So December 12th, very little communication from Alex. The last communication on Alex's phone was a call to Chad and Lori on the Raphael phone line. So he, they were the last people he called. They done did some kind of blessing, got him to stick himself in a chest with some kind of spear. You'll never convince me he did not somehow kill himself in a way that made it look. I mean, Tammy Daybell had, you know, the, the whole suspicion is she had that pink foam coming out of her mm -hmm. mouth. That's respiratory. Yeah, it's he had suspicious. clots in his lungs. Yeah, Whatever they used on Tammy, I'm not going to be surprised. We, we'll never know because that's over. Yeah, but um, I'm convinced whatever was used on Tammy to murder her, I think Alex took it because of the presence of clots. Yeah, in both her lungs. If she had him in her lungs, she had that pink foam. It's respiratory. Anyway, so on December 13th, they follow up with Lori's sister Summer. She said she had not seen or heard from JJ and Tally for months. And she believes they're not endangered and that they're in the care of Lori. All right, Fruit Loop. Uh, she said she thinks the reason they were sent to look for JJ and Tylee is because Kay wanted to get custody of JJ. The investigator said that wasn't the case, but they needed to see and speak with the kids either in person or a video call. Like, if you remember, Kay was saying, just let me talk to him. Yeah, all they wanted was to see that he was okay. Okay, yeah. That's what a welfare check is. Right. Yeah. December 20th, investigators enter JJ and Tylee into the database as missing and endangered. December 21st, Colby calls the investigator and said he had seen media reports on JJ and Tylee and was even more concerned for their well-being. So you do realize that December 21st is the first time I read about this case. And what did I do? I called you yeah. and I said, you got to read this case. It's crazy. There's a lot yeah. of dead people around these people. We need to start a podcast. Yep. How fun would it be to start a podcast? Oh my gosh, I miss doing legal stuff. Let's do it. It took us to June, but this was when that, like December 21st, that's when yeah. this was born. Yep. Technically. Yep. I remember, and I remember seeing the big billboards. That was a big thing on, on TV and all. It was yep. big billboards with their pictures on it. Yep. Uh, Colby also said on November 30th, he was given a Nissan Rogue that was registered to Lori and Alex. Lori told Colby the car would be driven to Arizona for him to use. Lori stopped communicating with Colby, but he was able to get in touch with Alex, who got him the car. Uh, police were interested in the car since it had been in Idaho during the time frame of interest. Uh, asked to seize the car and to process it, Colby understood and told them where it was parked. Uh, during the search warrant of the car, they found receipts from Idaho um, and trace samples. The rear passenger seat was a connected bench seat. One of the specialists noticed two distinct stains at the edge of the bench seat, and in the appro approximate area, a passenger would be seated. A third stain was found along the outside of the rear passenger side seat belt. Preliminary testing of all three stains were positive for blood. Additional chemical tests showed presumptive positive result on the upper seat belt anchor affixed to the passenger side. Um, what is that? Pillar? It's a pillar. So I think it's like, you know how you have a seat belt and then you have kind of have that thing up top and it's got like hard plastic on it. And then the yeah. belt comes out of that. I think yeah. that's what they're talking about. Yeah, being retracted and expanded. Right, yeah. And they found an American Airlines flight receipt, restaurant, and gas receipts. Dude, when stuff happens in a car... You can't get rid of it. No, and blood goes everywhere. Yeah. You think you've seen it all? Uh-uh. 
Yeah. So real quick, we'll run through the what they found in the car as far as DNA, and then we'll end it there, uh, mainly because I'm seeing double at this point. But so the DNA testing from the, I'm going to say Nissan Rouge, the stain from the left rear seat was a female DNA labeled unidentified female number one. A small red brown stain on right seat belt, right rear seat belt, female DNA labeled unidentified female number two. Large brown stain on right rear seat belt was consistent with female number two. Um, stain on right rear seat that was cut out, unidentified female number one. Right rear seat belt hanger, insufficient DNA. Red brown stains on right front seat. The sample was a mixture of a minimum of two contributors with major donors DNA being female matching unidentified female one. We do not know. I don't know. I don't know if it's out there. Uh, who female one and female two are. But that's what they found in the car that Colby was given. Can you imagine Colby now knowing that he was driving around in a car that was potentially a crime scene? Oh, exactly. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, mm. So anyways, that's kind of all we have for tonight. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to do something quick tomorrow night, our big live, 7.30 Eastern. We're going to be on YouTube and we'll post all the links right before share it with your friends we're just gonna have a good time we're gonna talk some cases we're gonna talk stuff other than cases we just kind of wanted to end the year in a fun way and just totally i mean we're gonna do episodes after tomorrow before yeah. the, the year ends but we really just like are blown away with how much this podcast has grown this year it's been mm -hmm. huge and this is just kind of like the, the way we could all sit in a room together and just chew the fat and just have some fun. Yep. And so seven 30 Eastern and we'll go as long as it goes. Yeah. But we're really excited. And, um, we have pinned to the top of our Facebook and Twitter question, um, posts, anything you want to ask, we're going to start pulling those tonight, getting them ready to go tomorrow. Then you can ask questions in the chat. Yeah. on youtube so we're really looking forward to it we will see you we're gonna do a missing tomorrow yep and um it may just be fruit loop i'm not sure about my timing for tomorrow and then the big live so we will see you guys back at 7 30 on youube live eastern. all right yep eastern all right yep. have a good night With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC.